missing after a night out at the other point. It's time to start caring. Welcome to Talking News. I do it just to make sure that we can get their face out there as many times as we can. Chelsea Bear's body was never found. The community is still working together to try to locate Sarah Galloway. Good job, Train. Proud of you. The parent of the missing daughter was sleeping in his car. We tell him. Hello, guys. Welcome to Talking News. Please hit that subscribe button and like button right now so you don't forget. Also, hit that notification bell if you would like notifications on new uploads. Okay, guys, it's fall time too. Wow, it's cooling off here. But anyway, so we're talking about the um, Camille McKinney, aka Cupcake Story, out of Birmingham, Alabama. We're doing an update with some video clips here that I want to share with you guys. So Cupcakes was at a cousin's birthday party October 12, 2019. They were at the Tom Brown Village where a surveillance camera picked them up playing outside of the buildings and it was close to the street. In that surveillance camera you can see two men approach the children. The first man kind of walks by it looks like he says something briefly to him, but uh, it's really hard to tell. And then you have the second male that comes up to them. Some people are, are saying it might be a female. And he uh, engages with the children, talks with them a moment, and then he walks off. And then you see the two uh, toddlers kind of following behind him like little ducks. Police review the surveillance camera and they actually catch this. Toyota SUV leaving the scene of the area or crime and uh, ended up being Derek Brown and Patrick Stallworth which have an interesting uh, story. So Patrick they found some child obscenities on his phone and as for Miss Brown she was on parole for recent kidnapping charges. Right now, we don't have the details of all their background, but we do know that that is more than enough evidence to make them a person of interest. I can tell you right now that Patrick was not behind bars long before finally he bailed out on a $500,000 bond. And I want you to hear what his attorney had to say. Here we go. After bonding out of jail, an attorney for a person of interest is talking. It's disappointing that someone has labeled him as involved with kidnapping a beautiful child. So his client, who has obscenities of children on his phone, he's trying to make it look like this guy wouldn't do something like that. This guy has child obscenities on his phone. Attorney. This attorney is a sleazeball, guys. I mean, if you watch other attorneys that represent people that are accused for such horrendous, uh, horrendous crimes, they never ever try to make them completely innocent. They say we are out to prove their innocence. This attorney is a scumbag. Okay, we'll continue. Earlier this week, Birmingham police released pictures of a person of interest in connection to the kidnapping case of Camille McKinney. Police later detained someone for questioning. On Tuesday, Birmingham police arrested two people on unrelated charges. Patrick Stallworth faces several child porn charges. He was arrested alongside Derek Brown. While the charges are unrelated to the case, police chief Patrick Smith said they remained persons of interest. Uh, the question is, he's not a suspect. Emory Anthony is Stallworth's attorney. He says his client isn't involved in anything related to Camille McKinney and has no relationship with the family. He's outraged that his name has been brought up and the family has been threatened and different things being said about him, but he's not involved at all. Anthony tells us while his client works in the area where the incident happened and was in the area that day, they may be able to give an alibi where he was at the time of the kidnapping. We hope that what has transpired with the child, whoever took the child or whatever was there, get the child back to the parents and to the proper authorities. 
As far as the child porn charges Stallworth faces right now, his attorney says his client entered a plea of not guilty. Stallworth's first court appearance is scheduled for November 12th. Okay, so November 12th, he will have his first um, court appearance, which we have a lot of court appearance uh, coming up um, November. It's going to be hard to keep up with. The, there are so many. And also throughout October, the end of October. So if you're keeping up with uh, Kelsey Barrett, that's coming up. Andrew McDonald is coming up, as well as Savannah Spurlock. So, I mean, yes, that is that uh, attorney's job to defend this guy. But I can tell you, with what was on his phone and the charges that Derek Brown had on her previously, it doesn't look good. So it's up to investigators. If I was them, I would be scrambling for more footage and everything that they need in order to make sure that they do, if they are involved, that they don't get away with it. So how does the public feel about this case? Right now, I have to tell you that I'm kind of disappointed in how they're handling it because they're blaming the parents and they're, uh, they're really screaming at the parents during a time that they shouldn't. And um, Cupcake's dad, Dominic McKinney, has spoken out. It might not be in the best way, but it was the best way that he knows how. And I think it's great that he even cares and he's out there searching for his daughter. As for the mother, there is a lot of people really bashing at her. And guys, this isn't the time to do it. The less stress that this woman has on her the better she'll be able to relax and think about that day. So I think it's, I, my personal opinion is this, do not give her a hard time. Let her be relaxed so that she can concentrate where she needs to concentrate. She won't even talk to anybody because she's scared. Here's a small clip of the mom. First and last name for everyone, please. My name is April, AP. Ariel Thomas T H O M A S. What do you want to say? If anybody see Cupcake, just call her name. Don't call her Camille. She answers the Cupcake. Yep. Can you see my back? Please just bring her back. Does this look like a lunch break? This child's missing, for God's sake. This made me mad. Guys, this is not how we do at our workplace. We don't take it casually. We don't do the least we can, and we're not lazy. If you're at your job, you do your best at your job. That's just nothing irks my nerves more than a lazy person. So we heard from the dad as well, which on my other videos, I'm going to do a small clip of the father. 
you can refer back to my older videos and check out the interview uh, by Dominic McKinney. So a lot of people did not understand his southern draw, and I understand this because it's mixed with um, what I call our ghetto talk because I grew up in the projects when I was younger, so I know uh, the language there. It's different. And so other people who are not used to hearing it have trouble understanding what he's saying. And I can tell you in a nutshell, what he was trying to tell you was he was not going to give up. He's not the type of person that ever gives up, especially for cupcakes. He is not going to give up. And that's what he's trying to stress to you guys. And he says um, that he don't usually talk with the public or the media. But he appreciates that y'all are doing this for Cupcake. And so he's facing the media to do this for his daughter. So he is appreciating the media for giving his daughter this spotlight. And giving his family a chance to get her face out there and find her, of course. So he does try to stress to you, I'm not the type of guy who gives up not the type of guy who usually wants to be in a spotlight and he's doing it uh, for his daughter and he appreciates all the public helping him out so i hope that helped you guys out understand who this guy is a little bit he's just the type of guy that likes to mind his own business and do his thing so uh our next topic on this case well, actually, I wanted to show you her grandmother um, when she was being interviewed. Everyone who's watching, my name is Lakeisha Sampson, and I am the grandmother of Camille and Cupcake. I want my baby to come home. That's all we want. That's all we're asking for is for her to return. That's all we want out of this. I mean, if the inbox can go on my Facebook page, do whatever it is. Just do whatever. We just want the baby back. That's all we want. We want her back. So on a lot of group pages and stuff, it's going around that she is not the grandmother. She looks too young to be the grandmother. Well, she does look good for her age, but that is, she says in her own words, she is the grandmother of Cupcakes, the missing three-year-old. So Cupcakes was playing at the um, Tom Brown Village where a lot of people are harassing the mother and anyways you can see the mom kind of cursing at everybody she's not liking the judgments for speaking with me. So community has come out here to help support the family, to help pray, to help search, to help look. So the community again, there's so many people out here out here watching. So again, community has come out here just to help support and pray. Uh, Mackenzie Wallace, there is a photo of the child that's on our website, cbs42.com. It's one of the top stories on our page, and her photo, you can see it. Okay, so that was um, new footage right after Cupcakes disappeared. And you can see what is, people believe that is April, the mother of Cupcakes, kind of having a breakdown because people are judging her for, for not 
uh, they believe she went watching her child. So while this was going on, there was another video I was able to uh, pull up and find, and you're probably going to see a bunch of them popping up shortly, of witnesses talking to police describing well it's a child that is describing what he's seen i mean he says that he's seen that cupcakes wasn't wearing shoes or a child that got into their vehicle it's hard to make out um getting into a blackish blue vehicle so here we go they found the one early now we need y'all to help us find cupcakes did y'all see the right here right Okay, this child right here said, I can't put him on camera. It was blackish blue. It was a car truck. It was a truck. Blackish blue. Okay, so we do get a clue into what this um, child does see. And remember, guys, he is a child. So, But uh, you hear the police officer ask him to describe what he's seen. It was hard to do because that woman kept jumping in. Um, it had been better if she kept her just not talked. So the boy describes to the officer what he sees. And he says that whoever these people were they were trying to lure the children in with candy then he says which it's hard to make out he looks underneath the truck and he sees little people's feet an officer asked him did he have shoes or she have shoes on and he said no you hear the uh officer say okay the boy continues to describe what he's seen and he suggests that these, whoever these people are, they're switching cars at some point. And I couldn't make out what was said afterwards because that woman just starts cussing and talking. So uh, I got a little agitated because I couldn't hear the rest of it. But um, anyways, I'm sure we'll hear more on this later. So next, uh, what I want to say is, you know, these you have these witnesses out there. They still haven't found her. And I'm still saying that these people do this for a living. They do this for money. And I believe that they have a hideout place. And we're running out of time for them to find that spot. So, you know, you got that one guy. He's released right now. He's going to know somebody. And he's probably having that. Whoever he knows. He knows better not to go to the area where she's at. That he's being watched. But somebody he knows is able to go check on that area you know if she's still okay and um that's all i want to say about it but um yeah we're hoping and praying that she is okay still
Now I want to remind people he is innocent. Patrick Stallworth and Derek Brown are both innocent until proven guilty. We don't know for sure they played a role in this, but we do suspect they did. So I want to play another clip for you. Found a missing child. Yeah, only to find they didn't. Melanie Christopher joins us now in the studio with the latest mail. Jay, while a large perimeter was blocked off in a Birmingham neighborhood this morning, this after law enforcement received a tip that the missing child, Camille McKinney, could be there. Now, around noon, a crowd of bystanders had gathered, and many thought the missing child had indeed been located. In fact, the sheriff confirmed that Camille, who goes by the nickname Cupcake, was found only to be contradicted by the Birmingham police chief. That sheriff later telling our sister station in Birmingham he'd received misinformation from one of his deputies in the field. So could you imagine being those parents and hearing that information that the child was found and then all of a sudden, I'm sorry, ma'am, sir, but uh, my deputy made a mistake. That would be absolutely devastating uh, because it's like going through it twice. So right now we still have no new tips. And of course, police do know some things that are going on that they are not sharing with the public, but they still continue to ask the public to be involved. And they're getting so many tips. They're getting thousands of tips. And this is, they're trying to uh, make sure that they investigate each and every one of them, but that is a very difficult thing to do. And so that's gonna take up even more time. So they ask that, uh, only credible tips like that you actually seen with your own eyes and hear with your own ears anything you know that you've seen personally or heard personally to call them please do not call them if you um, are psychic and you have this feeling that you might know where she is time is very limited right now and that window is closing quickly. I was trying to take a break, but I feel like I need to do this one video. I also have some uh, horrible information on the Jones case, if you're keeping up with that. Some horrifying uh, new um, actions on people. People are, how can I word it here? So we have people that are actually going into private spaces and videotaping private property. And the family is kind of getting upset about this and you can't blame them. I'll try to cover that as soon as I can. So continuing with the cupcake story, I want to ask people that live in this area in the uh, Tom Brown Village area in Birmingham, Alabama to review this tape over and over and over. Pay attention to the way this guy walks. I wish I could slow it down for you. I wish they would show a slower version of this. I think it would help because um, a lot of times people can identify people by just how they stand or walk. So maybe perhaps if you know how to slow this video down, someone can um, pop it up there at original speed. So again, this is Cupcake and her little friend playing out here in the open. They were at, at birthday party and you can see this guy he appears to have some sort of limp um, he approaches the children and then he walks off and they follow him i just find it very strange that these kids trust this person the stranger so easily and of course i guess if uh, children today uh, you know they're not watched like they're our parents watched us we were kind of like you couldn't breathe without your mom knowing i noticed even in my neighborhood there are three-year-olds and i've complained about it several times that these parents are not watching their children they've almost been hit and um dulce the missing um girl in new jersey the same thing the parent wasn't so police are going to have to start making an example somewhere you know, moms are just, and fathers are just not protecting their children like they're supposed to. Again, you can see the children follow him, and he has quite a lead on them, and they kind of straggle behind a bit. Okay, so watch here. The, 
the second guy is going to walk up right in here anytime he comes up to them stands there talking to them for about 10 to 11 seconds or so where he takes off and the children follow him right behind him so right here you see another guy walk past him this is the first guy this is who police are looking for this is at uh, 724 and as 725 starts to approach I think we hit uh, 724 at 45 seconds the guy walks up and right when it turns to 25 the guy approaches walks away and the children follow him out of sight now there's a bunch of rumors going around guys i try not to spread rumors especially when a case is hot anyways guys having to switch environments but we're hoping that they do find her please share these videos guys share her face share her story and please try to leave uh the mother along spread that so that she's able to concentrate and think about that day maybe she'll think of something that might will um, actually push this case forward all right guys gotta go much love see you soon